I'm Paul Pateman, uh, aka Pate, and I'm an illustrator. I work in a communal studio full of other illustrators, artists, designers. I've always hated the overlapping lines you get when you colour in with felt tip pens, and as a kid I was always drawing and I used to go over and over and over trying to get this really nice flat colour and then uh, and then at university, I think we, this was the first time we came across Macintosh computers and, and, and fo it was Photoshop at the time and just being able to fill things in with flat colour and all that sort of stuff, I was really into that. And so I specialised into graphic design and then within graphic design there was an advertising section. My tutor said to me, all the glamour and all the money <laughs> is in advertising. And coming from the place that I did, a small town in Northamptonshire, I was like, well, I will take the glamour and take the money. <laughs> to start with, it was just really exciting. But about five years in, I was um, I just wasn't drawing anymore, and I'd drawn all of, all of my life. And I think the constant churn of ideas and the stress of advertising just meant that I wasn't really doing any sort of pure creative stuff. I don't think that I ever wanted to be a creative director. I've always thought, that there's always that thing that they used to be millionaires row, you used to be able to pay, paid a lot of money for doing great ads and that was enough. But then it was like, well, that's not enough. Now you have to be a creative director. And writing great ads is a really selfish thing. And being a great creative director is an altruistic thing. You have to get great ads out of other people. And just because you can do the former, there's no indication that you can do the latter. The real stress in advertising didn't come until I left AMV for TBWA. I found it hard to let go of my own style of doing things and let other people flourish. It culminated in having a really weird meeting about some sort of experiential work for a pitch where I just sat in this room and it felt like either I'd gone mad or everybody else had gone mad because <laughs> they were just saying things that were so nonsensical. Once, once the, the senior people start to nod their head, you know your case is lost and that what I believe is sort of diametrically opposed to what you believe. So there is only one solution and that's go. I mean, I think we realised quite early on that it was going to be hard because we didn't really have the kind of the fixer in place, the connections with, you know, who can say, oh, I know this marketing director, we're going to talk to them. So it was quite a hard slog, but we were in talks with some fairly major brands to sort of get in some way on their roster to do, to do work for them. But anyway, I got pneumonia and that gave me, I was in hospital for a week and I just thought, I, I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to do it anymore. I don't really want to, I don't want to be, I don't want to work for somebody. I don't want to, I don't want to talk to marketing people. I don't want to be in those meetings where you're endlessly talking instead of doing, I've just got to get out. Really, I, I, I'm grateful for having pneumonia because it just gave me a complete time out because you're so ill, there's nothing is expected of you and you, you, you just can't do anything except sit there and think, really. And, you know, I saw people in my ward of varying ages, but mostly the old people affected me, just how some of them were neglected, some of them didn't have families, some of them hadn't looked after themselves, and you just sort of... I was just wondering about their lives and sort of comparing it to my own and thinking there's, you know, it was a brush with death, not a, I don't know how close it was, but it just makes you think you've got to spend as much time doing things that you love as possible. Uh, and I, you know, I, just, I love drawing. I love drawing. I'm, I'm going to try and do that.